right guys, um, quick video here. And in this one, I am going to show you how to verify phase cohesion through your crossover points using something as simple as an RTA and a measurement microphone. Sounds scary to some of you, I know. Um, but it's actually very simple. Um, the reason for this video is because um, recently during during the whole quarantine and pandemic thing, uh, we did slow down at the shop. So, you know, actually, thankfully, we're not slow anymore. But um, I started offering remote tuning again just to take up some of my time. And I made a couple posts about it. And be about three or four people either commented directly on my posts or private messaged me giving me various excuses as to why it's bullshit and not a viable way to tune a car. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's it's not the greatest way to tune a car. It's mostly to give, you know, people a visual learning experience on how to, you know, start tuning your car for a beginner. Um, you know, a lot of these people diving in head first, you know, I mean... I, it's tough. I mean, when I first started, I had no idea what the hell was going on. And I wish someone could have, you know, remotely as accessed my computer and showed me what was what. But a lot of people are taking offense to it or not. I don't know about offense, but they're, they're making a scene and saying bullshit that is frankly not true. Uh, the common denominator of those complaints are mostly phase related. And to be honest, you know, they're like, oh, how you can't verify phase remotely. And my my response to that is, yeah, yeah, you fucking can. It's pretty damn easy, actually. Um, so we're going to show you how to do that. Now, for starters, before we jump in, I just want to say that in order for this simple process to work correctly, you need to make sure you understand how phase and how crossovers work. The way crossovers work with a standard, um, with a standard infinite impulse response style filter, an IIR filter, um, which is what most DSPs use. Uh, as you apply a filter, you know, EQ band or crossover, uh, that affects the electrical phase response as well as the acoustical response. Uh, now, that being said, when you're making, you know, when you're applying filters for correction, don't get worried, you know, when you're applying EQ, don't worry when you're fixing the acoustic frequency response, you're mostly fixing the phase response as well. So don't freak out saying that, oh, EQ is bad because of phase. It, no. I don't want to hear that from this video. Don't even fucking start. That being said, um, with each order, which with each order crossover slope, you introduce a 45 degree uh, change in phase at that crossover point. And for this video, I am going to be using 24 dB Linkwitz Riley slopes, fourth order Linkwitz Riley slopes. And those, when summed together, is a 360 degree shift in phase, which means zero. So ideally, when we sum these, these should have perfect cohesion and a perfect uh, summed response throughout the crossover and even a little beyond it. So, yeah. As you can see here, I already took um, measurements of my sub and mid bass. Uh, this is the subwoofer with a crossover of 80 hertz at 24 dB. And it is a reference level of the software, um, not necessarily over here, but the reference level in the software is 82.5 decibels. Let me show you exactly. As you can see here, the you know, one blue line is the target curve and the other blue line, why are they both blue? I don't know. Um, but this is the target house curve versus the measured response. As you can see, we are perfectly nailing that target curve throughout the crossover range. So, you know, as to not deviate and, you know, actually screw up this experiment. And then we also have the mid base, which is 80 hertz to 330 hertz, also 24 dB link with Riley. And as you can see, we match those perfectly as well. 
So, um, let me also show you the house curve that I'm using for this it is a half Whitledge. And this is what it looks like. Or, you know what? Let me just turn. That's what it looks like. So, when you apply these filters on the side, you know, it's taking into account that, you know, that house curve. So, let me just put this back. Um, so, there we go. So, yeah. Also, another thing to note, signal delay in my processor for this is purely set by distance. My sub is 68 inches away. My mid bass is 48 and 61 inches away from my listening position. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, for starters, you are going to need to take uh, response. Let, let's use, you know, you can apply this to any uh, of your sets of speakers. But for the sake of this video, we are going to do subwoofer to mid-bass transition because that seems to be the hardest for people. Um, and it's also, you know, what results in good upfront bass. So I guess take it as a two for one video. Um, so for starters, you're going to need to take a reference measurement of both your subwoofer and your mid-bass on your own. And as you can see, I already did that. I did not want to waste your time in this video doing that. So I already did that. And again, they follow the house curve with the crossovers perfectly. So that means in theory, if they were 100% in phase, that at this crossover point of 80 hertz, there will be a 6 dB rise at the crossover point versus both measurements due to constructive interference. So we're at 84 dB. It should be, it should sum right up to 90 dB at the crossover. And there should be no dips anywhere um, outside the crossover region, like in the, you know, 150 or, you know, anywhere, anywhere just near the crossover range. There shouldn't be any other dips. Uh, and we'll get into, into that later. So let's go ahead and take our first measurement. Um, by the way, which you should be using mono pink noise. You can generate that right here in Rumi Q wizard, uh, with the generator and you can do pink PN pink periodic noise is actually what I use because you can match the FFT length um, right here and you can download it as well and you can even set reference levels. Cool. So let's get into it. All right. And would you look at that? It looks like we have perfect summation across the board at 80 hertz or crossover we went from 84 db perfectly up to 90 db that's 6 db summation this is perfectly in phase now if we were for some reason let's say we accidentally wired our subwoofer the wrong way and let's flip the polarity this is what it would look like As you can see, not only you know is it much below our last measurement, but it's even less output than the individual driver's response through the crossover range. This is complete cancellation. So, um, you know, if your if your response looked like you know this teal one right here, that's how you know you have a major phase issue. Honestly, your first thing to do would be to you know flip your polarity in your processor or your, you know, amp wires, sub wires, whatever. Um, now let's say, you know, it wasn't a perfect summation. Let's say it was mostly in phase, but then we got a dip over here. Let me, uh, you know, let me simulate that somehow. Um, I'll do that with an all pass filter. Hold on. Uh, let's just do 115 Hertz second order slope with a Q of six. And as you can see, we just introduced a second order all pass filter. And you can see that right there in the phase response. So let's take another measurement. Again, we're just using this to simulate if you don't have things, you know, if there isn't perfect summation in your car. So 
this is why having um, a reference measurement of both your subwoofer and your mid bass comes in handy because you can see, you know, yeah, we, you know, go from 84 dB at the crossover point, we go from 84 to about 90, but you know, you can see there's still great, you know, summation up here, but right after the crossover in the mid bass region, it actually dips down a little bit. That you know, again, yeah, we did apply an all-pass filter, but in, in some cars, there are situations where, you know, there are room modes that could cause issues like this and or reflections or whatever. So let's say the room caused this. What do we do? So in this is mostly in the mid-base territory, and it's at, you know, again, let me stop for a second. This method only kind of applies for the Helix processors, or any processor that can do all pass, second order all pass filters. So, back at it. Uh, we're at about, you know, 110 hertz. So, let's go right to our mid base and apply an all pass filter at second order at 110 hertz. And make it, you know, we want the Q of 5. Let's make it pretty, uh, yeah, so right there. So you can see that right there. All right, let's go for another measurement. Perfect response across the board. And look, it perfectly matches our initial measurement. Hell, it even looks a hair better. <laughs> now, that little difference is most likely just differences in measurements. Um, but you can see right here, we have, you know, it perfectly in phase, not only at the crossover, but through the entire crossover region. So, yeah, I mean, you can apply this to... Not only your subwoofer to mid bass, but you know your mid bass to mid range and mid range to tweeter. Um, that being said, you know when you don't have when it's mostly in phase and you don't have perfect summation like that, things can get a little tricky. Um, to be honest, the, your beginner, your average person isn't really gonna know what to do at first. But um, yeah, so this video again is to show you guys that yeah. You know, you kind of can use an RTA to verify phase. It's not hard. All you have to do is understand how, one, how audio works, two, how measurements work, and three, how measurements translate to what we hear. And I get it. A lot of you guys are probably going to criticize. The same people that message me and post it on my, my posts are probably going to say, but that's not how we hear. Again, it's about understanding how measurements correlate to what you hear. So, please, stop stop saying you can't you can't do this shit purely by measurement. Yeah, I get it. You can, you know, you can change and adjust things for the better, you know, the very small things that are the quote unquote rest of the ten percent by ear, but frankly, for the people that are you know, catered to this whole remote tuning thing, the guys who are trying to learn how to do this, that stuff doesn't really matter anyway. Again, this is just about understanding the basics and giving someone a, a starting point. So, yeah, here we go. That's it. Pretty, pretty damn simple, wasn't it? Again, all you have to do is follow the basic rules of audio. Make sure your crossovers are correct. Make sure your signal delay is correct. Make sure your frequency response is correct. And make sure your phase is correct and everything will work as intended that's it so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it um let me know you know if there's any other subjects that you might want me to cover in you know my next videos you know showing you how to do things or you know how we do things in certain cars or whatever anything you guys want to see you know comment and let me know thank you